So now we talk about the light gauge steel frame. You remember about what is different between the hot formed steel and cold formed steel. The hot formed steel mostly using for the major structure and cold formed steel used for the non-structural member. And hot formed steel require the heating on the steel to make it a stronger the member. But the cold formed steel that doesn't require any heating of the metal because it's just using for the non-structural member. The cold form steel it is the same as the light gauge steel frame. Let's talk about the light gauge steel frame. Okay. The light gauge steel frame is non structural member. It is used for the framing wall at the interior and exterior. It uses the galvanized steel and it is usually considered by the finishing material. And steel framing studs are made by cold rolled method from the steel sheet. So you can just see from the, this image, the first exterior frame. So you can see this is X bracing. Okay, this is a, a bracing frame. And then you see the little bit different color. This is a column and then the bracing. And they have a little bit darker because this is a half formed steel. It's major structure. But you can see the cold foam steel here. This is a light gauge steel. It is for the framing. It doesn't have any structure. The purpose. Also, interior you can see the framing made by the light gauge steel. I also talk about that this is made and coated by galvanized steel. You just remember about the, what is galvanized steel. It is coated by the zinc. It is very cheap looking. However, it's good resisting the rust, and also it's pretty cost the uh, economical way to use in this way. So. When you expose the steel, it's, I'm not recommend using the galvanized steel because it's not good looking. However, if you recess the, your steel member, the galvanized steel is also is really good because it's good to the protect the rust. Also, it's cheap as well. So that's why for the framing, usually using the galvanized steel. So the light gauge steel framing, this is a member. So you can see the C stud and the track, and you can see the top track and the bottom track. You can see the each the member prison. So I just kind of show show some video. It is shows the process of the light gauge steel member from the factory. Let's watch this together, and then we talk about light gauge steel accessories. The Jobsite PS600 steel stud and track roll framing machine is designed for high quality and efficient production whether you are a steel frame builder or you operate a steel stud production facility. This machine has the capability to produce structural or non-structural studs ranging in size from a true 6 inch through 2.5 inch widths. It can run steel ranging from 26 to 16 gauge at a speed of 70 to 80 feet per minute. To ensure the highest quality and maximum life of the machine, all parts are manufactured in-house and all rollers are nitride hardened. The heavy duty flying punch is designed to interchange tooling for different hole sizes and shapes. The flying punch maximizes speed by punching while the stud continues through the machine. The user can easily program stud and track members in different sizes and quantities to within an accuracy of 130 seconds of an inch. So you can see how you how we how they fabricating the the cold foam steel, right? It doesn't have any heating, it doesn't have any kind of uh, heating treatment here. Okay? So this is a light gauge steel member are able to make the various steel accessories. The first one is end clip. It is used to join members that meet the light angle. And the next one is foundation clip. So it attaches the ground floor to anchor the board embedded in the foundation. And then the when joist connect the beam or gutter, the joist hanger, it is the one possible connection method. Okay? So you can see the joint you can see the joist hanger and you can see how the joist and beam connecting together through the joist hanger. Okay. The, the steel frame 
the protected by the galvanizing. So you remember about the galvanizing steel. It is we can call it as the perilous metal. So this iron coated with zinc to protect rust. But it is also very cheap and then but this kind of pretty low quality. So that's why it is mostly used for the metal decking and roofing and ceiling framing and wall framing, mostly recessed from the finished material. So now we talk about the, some different function, how you making out the wall using the steel frame. The first one you need a track, which is a horizontal track anchored to ceiling and floor. It guide for the vertical stud. After setting top and bottom track, it need to build vertical stud for making rigid wall frame. You see the top track and bottom track. So using the, this is we can call it as the track. It, it is open end. Okay, but vertical stud you can see it is C, C shape. Okay, I can talk. So this is a vertical stud. It has the some arm it, at the end. So this is we can call the C stud. So C stud is vertical stud here. So it, it usually spaces 16 inches between the stud, and then it is passed at the top and bottom. So you can see the connection here and then bottom track, okay? It arranges in the track and usually space 16 inches between the stud and it also fasten the top and bottom, okay? And it's just kind of understanding terminology. This is a web and then this is a fringe and then this is a lip and return, okay? So this is a typical size about the web size and the fringe size. Web is here, and then two and a half inch to the eight fourteen inch, but usually we using the four inch to six inch. This is the atypical uh, web size, and then fringe size. It doesn't too much matter because fringe doesn't affect the your wall thickness. So your web size actually affect to the your wall thickness. So that's why you need to consider about the web size. Okay. So when you just kind of find out that this each stud, you can find out the this designation number. It is called something like that, 600S162-54. How we can read this number? This is a very codified number, but how we can read and how we understanding about the size of the stud basically from the this designation. So you can just find out the, this number and then you can just kind of understand it basically from the, this table. First, the 600 here. 600 means member depth. You can see 600 is 6 inch depth. And S is tile. S means third. And the 162 after S, it is French width, which is 162. You can find out the actual width here. And then 54 is thickness, which is uh, the gauge. The 54 is the 16 gauge. So you can see again 600, which is a six inch deep, and S is C shape, stud or joist, and 162, 1.625, which is a one and a five eighth inch wide, and 54, which is a 54 mil metal thickness, which is the 16 gauge metal thickness. Okay. So now we talk about the how we connect stud to stud. So you need the fastening for the connecting track and body stud. The first option is self-drilling. Okay, it is easy to connect and it is most common way to connect them between the body core and horizontal stud. Next one, the crimping tool is also pretty easy to connect in between the body core and horizontal stud. And last thing is nail like a fin, but you have to be using the nail gun. Okay, so you can choosing the three options for your the connection. The next one, we have to be know how we can cut the light gauge steel. Depending on the required uh, dimension, you have to be cutting the, your, the light gauge steel. The first one, you can use in the thin snips. It's kind of more about the, the scissor. This is quiet and clean and slower than power method. You can also consider to use 
power tool. So you can just using the several power tool to cut the gauge, the lightweight gauge, lightweight steel. And then torch cutting. So if you want to make in the hole, is for the conduit or for the pipe, you can use in the torch cutting. Okay. The next one is slip track. So what is about the slip track? The slip track is updated version of a top track system. You remember a top track system usually at the cross down. But slip track has the slotted hole. You can see the hole here. Having the extra depth, it has the extra space for the deflection during building movement caused by expansion and the contraction in lateral process. So usually it provides the tolerance so the, your, the vertical member can going up and down depending on the building movement. So it can protect the building, the wall cracking. So it usually using the slip track if having the let higher lateral process. Next one is pressing. So usually the right gauge steel is very thin. Sometimes it's not very stable. So that's why to protect and to connecting the wall very tightly, we usually using the bracing between the body crystal. This is a bracing here. Okay. So when you're just using the bracing between the stud, your wall can be more firmly connected. Okay. Now we talk about interior wall assembly ingredient. So when you wanna making out the interior wall using the steel frame, so you need the basic ingredient here. Of course, you need a metal stud, which is the track and the vertical stud. And you need the insulation. If acoustic thermal wall required, you can add the insulation into the wall. Then, if you need extra the acoustic protection, you might consider the RC, which is RC channel. Okay, you remember about the RC channel? We talk about this one later. This issue the before. If you're just designing about the RC channel, it provides airspace between the gypsum board, which is a sheet lock, and the finish wall. So it giving the airspace, it means noise actually the reduce the vibration through the, this airspace the installed from the RC channel. So this is a purpose for the reduce the, the acoustic and noise level. Next one, if the structure engineer said this wall have to be structure wall, in this case, you can add ply sheeting for the wall, okay? So this is a basic ingredient for the interior wall using the metal stud. Please remember, this is really important to know how you're designing about the interior wall. Then, you can add in the, some finish wall. You can, depending on the some types about the wall, you can add in the gypsum board, or you can add in a tile, sometimes you can add in the stone, sometimes you can add in the metal. So you can add in anything else for the finish. But this basic ingredient always fixed it, right? But you can change the finish wall depending on the, your design. The next one, this is a base in interior wall assembly that I just drew out the section here. You can just kind of find out the metal stud, uh, metal stud here. And then two layers of the the gypsum board here. So usually typical metal stud size here, three, five, eight, and four inches or six inches. You can see the metal stud and then just adding the two layers of the gypsum board. If structure required, you can add in the ply, she ply sheeting, but this is just showing the, the gypsum board finish. But I just draw out the two layers of the gypsum board. So what is the meaning about that part? Why I use the two layer instead of using the one layer? Because it requires two hour fire protection. If they only require one hour, you can only have adding the one layers of the gypsum board. So now we talk about the foreign. Why foreign channel required? Which is a see the you can see the G foreign and hat channel. So look at the left image. You can see the CMU block wall doesn't have a space for the insulation. In this case, you can use the G foreign. It has to accommodate the insulation between the channel. So you can just simply adding the G channel 
and adding the insulation, right? And giving the extra the insulation layer using the gel pouring. What about the head channel here? So head channel is R similar as R channel. So you're simply making up the the stud and the adding the the RC channel or head channel and then making the finish wall here. In this case, you can make in the some airspace. If you have a noise resource here, and then when noise source passing the this airspace, the this airspace absorbs the noise vibration. So means you can actually dramatically reduce the noise level through the, your wall. Okay. So just kind of understanding about the falling channel usually helps to reduce the noise vibration, or you can have the space for the insulation. Okay. So let's talk about the steel frame. This diagram shows the light frame platform construction. You guys kind of remember about what is different between the platform construction and balloon construction. We learned from the your 345 and 545 class from the wood lecture. What is about the platform construction? It is the build the floor to floor, the finish the floor as the platform and then construct to the next floor which is a platform to platform. What about the balloon construction? It's more about the continuous framing from the ground level to the top. Okay, this is a difference between the platform construction and balloon construction. Okay, but now we talk about the platform construction. The platform framing is quicker method of the construction and the well supported by top track and the bottom track. So you can see the diagram here. So this is a top track here and the build and the joist and you can add in the joist and you can see the bottom track and then between you have to be cover the wood decking system here for the floor and then adding the the bottom track and adding the vertical stud here it's same as concrete curb and concrete wall the concrete wall you have to be have and the joist and joist and have to be add the wood decking and then bottom track and have to be at vertical stud for the wall. Okay. So simply understand here, this is a top track from the previous, the below level, and also you can see the concrete wall. And then you need a end joist to hold your the joist, and you can add in a joist. Okay. This is a kind of more about the family all the time to make the framing the platform construction. You better to understanding from the this diagram, you can see the top track or concrete and having the end end joist, okay crosser joint joist and then this is a joist and then to making the flat the floor you can add metal decking or wood decking system and then you can add in the bottom track and then adding the body stud. Okay. So probably it's pretty easy to understand how you make uh, the framing using the, the metal stud. So I also make out uh, this short the modeling to understand better to understanding about the framing. You can see this is a concrete the wall and then the designing the cross end which is the end joist and then designing the joist and adding the some wood stud, the wood decking system here. Also, you can adding any the metal decking system or like a concrete over the metal decking system. And then you have to be designing the bottom track here. Okay, you can see the bottom track. Okay, and then designing the wall, the the body first stud. And then you need to be adding the finish sheeting outside. And then you can just having the insulation and waterproofing and adding the finish material. Okay. So next thing we have to talk about the framing at the gable loop. The framing at the gable loop. When you design the gable loop frame, you start to consider assemblies at the ridge and gable and the frame. You can see the ridge here. Top, and then the gable and framing here okay so for the loop ridge here the pair of nested joist makes a box like ridge you can see the two joists the uh, face together to make in a box like ridge it is like a beam to support the whole loop system 
and the gable and the framing the anchor clip you can see the anchor clip the connector loop lefter you can see the loop lefter okay from the top track it's kind of making out the gable and slope the loop from here it's better to see this diagram you can see the box like glitch here the face to face connection and then anchor clip to hold in the loop lefter from the top track okay so making it's pretty easy to making out this gable loop using the 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 light gauge steel. Also, there were several different kind of a method to making out this housing here. So we already talked about the platform, the construction, the top, the track, and end joist, and joist, and you have uh, some bottom track. In between, you have to be have the decking, okay, for the the plat, the floor. Same thing over the concrete wall. Also, you can designing about the lefter, which is a gable loop. We remember about the leech, box like leech, and then anchor clip to hold the lefter to making the slope the loop. Okay, I think it's please just kind of if you have time. Well, no, I, I mean just just sketch out the each one of them. I think if you know about the, this system, is this very easy to adapt? any other the project but if you don't know about this basic knowledge you are very difficult to understanding about the framing design this is a one of the most basic and foundation idea please memorize and me remember about the destroying i will ask you guys throw out the this framing on the exam too okay the next one is framing at the door and window so how we can designing about door and window using the metal framing so first one you have to be designing the header it's the same thing like a reach so face to face like a box beam like and then this is holding the major weight of the door and window and need to be adding the top plate of the wall okay it is loner channel and continue over the top of the header so it means again giving the guideline and then the holding the header from the top okay and then the cutting the channel Instead of each side also need to having the some the vertical stud to hold in the rear window and door from the side. Okay, I think it's kind of pretty easy. Just most important thing you have to be remember, you have to be have a box like the beam to hold your the window and door. Okay. So now we talk about comparing between wood and the metal frame. So last time we also talk about wood frame. So what is thought about advantage and disadvantage from the 345 and 545 class. Today I just kind of talk about what is about the advantage and disadvantage of your steel frame comparing to the light wood frame. The advantage first one is is flexible. It's very easy to construct. Okay, and then it's non-combustible material. It is also protect insect right insect never eating the your metal and then it's dimensionally stable so usually wood when it exposed the moisture exposed to the different temperature the wood is kind of a expansion and shrink right but metal never expansion and shrink it's much stable material also it's much lighter weight comparing to the wood frame what is about the disadvantage it is frequent blessing so that's wood, the metal framing, light gauge metal frame is very thin. So that's why easy to buckling. So that's why you have to be have a bracing between the frame if you have a long span. So it means this bracing holding the each framing tightly, it has to the protect the bending the frame. And then it is readily conduct heat and require extra attention to eliminating thermal bridge effect. You remember about the metal, it's very good conductive material. I mean, through the wall, without any protection, the, it loses the heat energy very easily, right? So that's why you have to remember about, have to be designing outside rigid insulation to protect the thermal transition between outside and inside. Especially the metal, without the D6 rigid insulation, you're losing a lot of heat energy through the wall. So because the 
the metal stud always touching the finish wall and interior wall is kind of good conductable material between outside and inside. You have to be very careful to design in this case. Also, it can be collagen if you're using the non-proper the metal material. So that's why we talk about using the galvanized steel for the framing. It's put pretty good collagen the protected material. Okay. So now I just want to share the this TED talk. I would like to think about common and conventional material. If you have a deep study of your materiality, you can make new types of material from the convention material. So let's watch it together and how people think about the material differently and how they propose the material as the different way. Okay, let's watch this video together. kids that every time I got in the car, I basically had to roll down the window. It was usually too hot, too stuffy, or just too smelly. And my father would not let us use the air conditioner. He said that it would overheat the engine. And you might remember some of you how the cars were back then, and it was a common problem of overheating. Um, but it was also the signal that capped the use or overuse of energy consuming devices. Um, things have changed now. We have cars that we take across country, we blast the air conditioning the entire way, and we never experience overheating. So there's no more signal for us to tell us to stop. Great, right? Well, uh, we have similar problems in buildings. In the past, before air conditioning, we had thick walls. The thick walls are great for insulation. It keeps the interior very cool during the summertime and warm during the wintertime. And the small windows were also very good because it limited the amount of, of temperature transfer between the interior and exterior. Then in about the 1930s, with the advent of plate glass, rolled scale, and mass production, we were able to make floor-to-ceiling windows and unobstructed views. And with that came the irreversible reliance on mechanical air conditioning to cool our solar-heated spaces. Over time, the buildings got taller and bigger, our engineering even better, so that the mechanical systems were massive. They require a huge amount of energy. They give off a lot of heat into the atmosphere. And for some of you may understand the heat island effect in cities where the urban areas are much more warm than the adjacent rural areas. But we also have problems that when we lose power, we can't open a window here. And so the buildings are uninhabitable and have to remain vacant until that air conditioning system can start up again. Um, even worse, with our intention of trying to make buildings move towards a net zero energy state, we, we can't do it just by making mechanical systems more and more efficient. We need to look for something else, and we've gotten ourselves a little bit into a rut. So what do we do here? How do we pull out us and dig us out of this hole that we've dug? If we look at biology, and many of you probably don't know, I was a biology major before I went into architecture. Um, the human skin is the organ that naturally uh, regulates the temperature in the body. And it's a fantastic thing. That's the first line of defense for the body. It uh, has pores, it has sweat glands, it has all these things that work together very dynamically and very efficiently. And so what I propose is that our building skins should be more similar to, to human skin. And by doing so, it can be much more dynamic, responsive, and, and differentiated depending on where it is. And this gets me back to my research. Um, what I propose first doing is looking at a different material palette to do that. I presently or currently work with smart materials and a smart thermal metal. First of all, I guess we call it smart because it requires no controls and it requires no energy. And that's a very big deal for architecture. Um, what it is is a lamination of two different metals together. You can see that here by the different um, reflection on the side. And because it has two different coefficients of expansion, when heated, one side will expand faster than the other and result in a curling action. So in early prototypes, I built these surfaces to try to see how the curl would react to temperature and possibly allow air to ventilate through the system. 
And in other prototypes, in surfaces where the multiplicity of having these strips together can try to make bigger movement happen um, when also heated. And currently have this installation at the Materials and Application Gallery in Silver Lake close by, and it's there till August if you want to see it. It's called Bloom. And the surface is made completely out of thermal bimetal. And its intention is to make this canopy that does two things. One is a, it's a sun shading device so that when the sun hits the surface, it, it constricts the amount of sun passing through. And in other areas, it's a ventilating system so that hot trapped air underneath can actually move through and out when necessary. You can see here in this um, time-lapse video that the sun, as it moves across the surface, as well as the shade, each of the tiles move individually. Keep in mind with the digital technology that we have today, this thing was made out of about 14,000 pieces, and there's no two pieces alike at all. Every single one is different. And the great thing with that is the fact that we can calibrate each one to be very, very um, specific to its location, to the angle of the sun, and also how the thing actually curls. So this kind of um, proof of concept project has a lot of um, implications um, to actual future application in architecture. And in this case, here you see a house um, that's for a developer in China, and it's actually a four-story glass box. It's still with that glass box because we still want that, that visual access. Um, but now it's sheathed with this thermal bimetal layer, the screen that goes around it. And that layer can actually open and close as that sun moves around on that surface. In addition to that, um, it can also screen areas for privacy so that it could differentiate from some of the public areas in the space during different times of day. And what it basically implies is that in houses now, we don't need drapes or shutters or blinds anymore because we can sheathe the building with these things as well as control the amount of air conditioning you need inside that building. I'm also looking at trying to develop some building components for the market. And so here you see a pretty typical um, double glazed window panel. And in that panel, between those two pieces of glass, that double glazing, I'm trying to work on making a thermal bimetal pattern system so that when the sun hits that outside layer and um, heats that interior cavity, that thermal bimetal will begin to curl. And what actually will happen then is it'll start to block out the sun in certain areas of the building and totally if necessary. And so you can imagine even in this application that in a high-rise building where the panel systems go from floor to floor up to 30, 40 floors, the entire surface could be differentiated at different times of day depending on how that sun moves across and hits that surface. And these are some later studies um, that are working on right now that are on the boards. Um, where you can see in the bottom right hand corner with the red, it's um, actually smaller pieces of thermal mana and it's actually going to, tr we're trying to make it move like cilia or eyelashes. Um, this last project is also a components. It's um, the, the influence, and if you have noticed, one of my spheres of influence is biology, is from a uh, grasshopper. And grasshoppers have a, a different kind of breathing system. They breathe through um, holes in their sides called spiracles and they bring the air through and it moves through their system to cool them down. And so in this project, I'm trying to look at how we can consider that in architecture too, how we can bring air through holes in the sides of a building. And so you see here some early studies of blocks where those holes are actually um, coming through. And this is before the thermal bimetal is applied. And this is after the bimetal is applied. Sorry, it's a little hard to see, but on the surfaces, you can see these red arrows on the left um, it's when it's cold and the thermal bimetal is flat, so it will constrict the air from passing through the blocks. And on the right, the thermal bimetal curls and allows that air to pass through. So those are two different components that I'm working on. And again, it's a completely different thing, as you can imagine, that air could potentially be coming through the walls instead of opening windows. So I want to leave you with one last impression about the project, or this, this kind of work in using smart materials. When you're tired of opening and closing those blinds day after day, when you're on vacation and there's no one there on the weekends to be turning off and on the controls, or when there's a power outage and you have no electricity to rely on, these thermal bimetals will still be working tirelessly, efficiently, and endlessly. Thank you. Okay, so I just want to bring the one last video clip. It is summarized though the general character of the steel that we discussed last class. 
But I think I already upload on the canvas. I think please watch yourself. I think this is also pretty valuable to watch because understanding about the steel and how you actually adapt the steel member to the, your design. Okay, please watch this video yourself. I think it's very valuable to understanding about the part. So, so for the this week we talk about the steel material. So we talk about the steel as the structure member, steel as the creating. Also, we talk about the history about the steel and then how we produce and how we fabricating the steel. And then we also talk about how we protect the steel and then why we need to protect the steel and how and what is about the rule to following uh, some of this uh, fire protection. Also, we talk about how we can read construction document set and also we talk about how we can join the steel member and also talk about how we can consider about the lateral forces through the, your the framing design and we'll talk about what is different between the hot foam steel and cold foam steel and then we'll talk about the cold foam steel and then what, how we can design in the light gauge steel how you can make in the framing how you can design in the gable loop using the this steel framing system also we'll leave it a little bit about the balloon platform system the what is different between and how you actually design the platforms the construction using the steel frame the, there are many different things I cover about the steel. I think this is important to understand because the this is kind of very fundamental idea to adapt your the metal construction and metal consideration to design the, your the architecture project. Okay, so thanks again for the second week of the semester. So hopefully you understand. And if you have any question, please let me know right away. Okay, thank you so much.